All right. So um, good evening, everyone. Hope our day was good. Hopefully our day was good. My own was long <laughs> and filled with meetings. So um, we started the style guide class. That was on Sunday evening. Talked about colors, how to generate colors, um, how to, what's it called? How to get your primary color, secondary color, and your grades. Like these are the three basic colors that you would need for every standard um, game style guide. Then you need your success, you need your error, then you need your default whites and black. Okay, sorry. Don't allow anybody in. Um, don't allow anybody. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's why they will res respond to the um, notification. So we'll be doing these colors properly now. Just give me a minute. We'll be restyling them. One thing in product design is your presentation has to be top-notch. It's called documentation. So we'll document this much more better. So for your colors, I stopped at just three colors. So the colors that you need again, your basic colors that you need again is your success your failure or error then your default whites then your default black now in design in ui design generally you are not um, allowed to use pure whites you're not allowed to use pure white for your designs so and you're also not allowed to use pure black because it is not um, good on the user's eye so we'll just go down a little here. Go down a little. That should be good. This is for your black. Rename it as black. Let's just pick up this. Oh, sorry. Let's just pick up this text here. I will not be explaining some of the things that I'm doing mm -hmm. because I believe you guys should know how to do them. Then your white, let's just go up here a little, just let's give it a shade of blue. All right, this is good. Then we'll say white. Then your success, that this for your status. I just pick on green from here. Not too dark, not too light. This is fine. Then our error states. Error states is always red. Now let's just make um, another shade of this. Let's see. Seven. Yeah, this is good. We also make another shade of this. This is 55, also 75. Yeah, so this is your black, this is your white, this is success, and this is your failure. Trying to be as fast as possible and not and at least explanatory as possible. Um, so after getting all these colors, you just rename them. This is your error. Let's auto layout this. Auto layout. 
Let's rename. Same way we remain. Rename error. Sorry, sorry about that. Ah, what's wrong with my code? Okay. So error, then forward slash your dollar sign, your n, then your 10. Oh, sorry, this is zero. Yeah, so rename. Same for this. So it says slash dollar sign n zero. Then rename. Then after that, you pick up your styler. Then you generate styles. By now, I expect you guys to have installed all the plugins. That's for your tints and shades and your styler. Now, for this also, you add it to your style, generate style. This also generate style. So if you click out, you should automatically see them here. This is your error. This is your success. This is your gray that we created in last class, secondary, primary, black, and white. So those are your basic styles. I will also, probably before the end of class, if we have time, I'll teach you how um, you can proper, uh, properly document all these colors. Now we moved to the typography. I give you the website that you can use to generate um, typography instead of racking your brain. But the only thing you need to do is your line spacing should be in multiples of the grid points system you're using. So if you are going with four point grid system, your line spacing must be in multiples of four. If you are going with eight point grid system, your line spacing must be in multiples of eight. And we have our iconography. Now you can get this directly from view sacks or icon sacks on um, the community on Figma. That one is quite easy to get. Then we have our grid system. We had already set up a grid system. Told us to go and set up the grid system for the iPad. That's for your tab tablet view. And we set up the grid system for um, desktop. Then we move to the buttons. Now it, is, it was the buttons we were working on before um, we stopped. So for these buttons, we have um, your defaults, you have your hover, and you have your clicked, and we have disabled. Now, there are multiple ways you can implement this. There are multiple ways you can actually do this. But I think you can look for a better way. Sorry. So the new fashion, so to say. Also, take note of um, UI trends that are happening. So you don't get uh, lost or when people are implementing good designs, you don't, your designs don't look old, so to say. So now, let's say we can leave this one as your primary 60 as your hover state. And you can add a little bit of um, drop shadow. Remember, I always use your styling. So change this one from F or F or to our white styling. Then this one. Now, the styles you've created, when you want how to use them, you go to either field, see this um, menu here, these four dots here. You click on it. All the colors that you created will be highlighted out here. So you just pick the one you want. Come here, pick the one you want. Come here. And okay, we can leave that. Now for your hover states. For your hover states, we can add something like a drop shadow. Now, how do we go about the drop shadow is a very important thing. 
you know, not everybody knows how to use a drop shadow, by the way. Even me that talking, I'm still like learning how to use drop shadows. It can make your designs beautiful. It can also make your designs very ugly. So only use drop shadows when you need to or when you feel you need to. Now, these are all our colors here, the shades of our blue. So um, drop shadow does not allow you to automatically pick um, a style or a color style. So you have to pick up your color style um, manually. Sorry. Just, just follow what I'm trying to do. Mm, I don't know why my spread is not working, but Let's see. Okay, that's the feel. Now, UI design tries trials and errors. So, the is the earlier you know that the better for you. Honestly, this is just full of trials and errors. Now I'm trying to work out this spread because it is disabled here. I'm trying to work it out to um, open. Probably okay. Let's still suspend it. Let's go with the old-fashioned way. Then when I get it to work, I can show you a much better way to implement it. Let's drop it over here. Now we have different types of buttons. We have primary buttons. That's your primary CTAs. CTAs are call to actions. We have secondary buttons and we have outlines or tertiary buttons. Now, as the name imply, they are used in a specific order. So we have primary, this is the primary, secondary. We use this as secondary and we have tertiary. So, Yeah, so here we'll change it to the secondary color. It's looking a little bit off, yeah. Change this also. Change this one also to black. Then Change this to so black. And the disabled remains the same. Now your tertiary buttons are basically outlines. They're basically strokes. Now, how do you um, work on that? You add your stroke, then you remove this. I hope you are, out, I hope you are here. I'm just talking and talking. I can't see anybody. Now, this is our tertiary button. Now, when you hover on it, um, okay, someone should give us um, a suggestion for when you hover on this, how should your tertiary button react? When you hover, it is an outline. I mean, that one your cursor is on, right? So probably when you over on it, it should bring out a light blue color, maybe a deep blue Okay, a lighter that. shade of blue, right? You're talking about something like this? Yeah, yeah, something like this. Different, yeah. Something like this? Yeah, yeah, this is fine. I mean, it's just to, it's just to make a difference, right? To show like, okay, there is a change in 
no je not no, more of the color than no the one with the text down eh you should be more of the color like when you hover over the button you should okay. be the color the color should change so the user will be able to identify that okay you click this button okay so do we all agree with this over state so we need to work on it again For me, it's fair, but it can also go deeper, you understand, as far as there's a change in the color scheme, like from before it was totally transparent, then when it's over on, there's a change in uh, the transparency. Okay, okay. Is it not too light? Actually, it is. Let's change the color inside. Yeah, why? Yeah, why? This should be good. Then what of the clicked states? What should we do to it? Kind of darker. The click can probably turn black or you know something very obvious, like maybe black or let's be darker. Or a darker color. Is this Sorry, a okay? Okay, yeah, that's fine. And the disabled can remain the yeah, same, like right? Yeah. Okay, but remember, we need to rename this. So this is secondary button. Just look at the right hand side of my screen. You see where I'm renaming it. Then Sherry button. Now with this, you are good to go to an extent. You are partially good to go. Now you can add icons to this. I won't, okay, let me, let me add icons. Now, this is where you see the effects of auto layouts and how auto layouts makes work easy for you. Let's just add one random icon. This is our icon here. Let's duplicate all this. Let's bring it down here. Let's change the color to white. Now you see, this immediately snaps. Nearly I dropped it, drop it inside. Nearly. You see, you can see the blue stuff that is there, the blue alignment. It snaps automatically. If you take it here also, it snaps. Take it here also, it does the same thing. Now you can increase the spacing. Let's increase the spacing a little. So let's decrease, let's decrease the padding. This is okay. 56, 32. Can I ask a question on behalf of everybody? Yeah, sure. Okay, so now I was designing those. I want to design I was doing. So you notice that this icon and click me, um, the, the space in between is not much, right? What if you want to put the icon far um, far to your right hand side? So how will you do it? Okay, so that's, that's actually very easy. So auto layout has made life easy for you. Just come here, click on it. Come here. You see spacing mode, see packed. So just click on it, then space between. Shake you get. Then after that, reduce the left and right pattern. You can give it like eight. Or oh, let's increase it a little. So did you get that? General, did you get it? No, no, no. I know what you're I'm just asking so for others to know. I actually know oh, what okay. you're yeah. Thank you. And um, for that one, you can just change it from um, space from packed. That's the default state. Default state is packed. You can change it to space between to make it left, right. Like you want the spacing to be in between. So let's revert back to our former one. So this was it. Okay.
Then same with here, 52, 56, 32. You can see that this is looking nice already. Then since this is disabled, I need to make this icon look disabled also. Yeah. So you can go on and on for um, your secondary and your tertiary. That's That should be something easy. So you just rename this to primary button with icon. And that gives you your buttons. Now, next on the list is your input field. Now, input field is also a very important thing in your design. Without input fields, the user can basically do nothing than just to reach and click buttons. So what we'll be doing now, let's say, same way you created the buttons, that's the same way you create input fields. Mm -hmm. So someone should give us like a dummy text that we can put inside, like a plus holder. Recommendations, anyone? Can give us recommendation. Joshua came the Agbaje recommendation, a placeholder for our input field. Guys, are we here? Are we here? Let's unmute and talk. Oh, Agbaje Joshua. Can do a place order for our input field. Okay, so let's save our time. Let's use user name. Okay. Oh, this is good. Then apply auto layout shift A. Give it left alignment. Let's increase this. Let's give it a stroke. Say black. No. Let's do this as gates. Let's increase this. Sorry. Let's give this 18 and increase it. Okay, this is this should be okay. Let's give it border radius of let's say eight. It's it's fine. Okay, it is fine. Let's change this. To body large. Let's reduce. Let's change the color. Now, every input field has a title. So let's just bring this over here. Let's change this to name. Let's reduce it. Oh, see if it as body large. Now let's give it a little bit of spacing. We can just give it a little bit of color. Now all these things I'm changing is based on personal preference. You can do anything you want with it. You can change anything you want to change. It's so just based on personal preference. Now, this is your default input field. Now, same way, add components, make it a component. Let's change this to inputs. Now, 
from the components, make a variant of it. Now, these variants will be what? Change this to state. Now, these variants be what's called the um, active states. Awesome. Now, to make it make the user know that this is active, we can just change the color of the stroke. Let's say blue. Then add another variant. The next variant to be selected. Selected states. Now selected states is where user clicks in to um, type anything they want to type. So this is your selected states. Now this is like a cursor. We are um, replicating a cursor and add another variant. This is your field, field states. This is where the user has already typed um, their values or probably, okay, in this case, name. Let's say, um, John Snow. And after, um, your field states, you also have um, success states. Sorry, sorry about that. We have our success states, which will be green. Then we also have our error states, which will be red. Now this is um, a typical example of an input field. This is not um, also perfect, but this is something we can work with. Sorry, Caleb. Can you just label it? Just put, um, just label it by, by the side. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. The same way I did for the buttons, I will label it. Okay. Yeah, so these are our buttons. Let's see text from here. This is default. This is active. This is selected. This is field. Let's duplicate this. Success. And this is arrow. Now that's basically how your input fields should look like. Now this is just a little representation. And I'm sure I told you at the beginning of the class and um, that was on Sunday that I won't teach everything. I won't show you everything. Go back and make your research. Read up on a material design. So that's guidelines for Google or user interface guidelines that's for Apple, or you read up on design systems of, um, I think Spotify as a public design system. Um, there's this popular automobile company that also has a design system. So you can read up on those different design systems and see how they implement all the um, little, little structures. Now, the next one I'll be touching is alerts. Alerts and notifications. And that's the last one I'll be touching.
alerts and notifications. Now, uh, an alert, basic structure of an alert. Let's, let me just draw like a wireframe of an alert. This is, this is our body of text. Then an alert basically has a, um, what's it called? A, body, a block of text. Let's give this a fill. Basically has a block of text. Then it has two icons. Now the first, the icon at the front is basically an icon, probably a close icon then. The next icon at the front will be the symbol for the kind of alert or probably a notification. So that is how an alert or a notification looks like. So let me try and get something like a dummy text. Let me just pick this up from Zoom. I hope you all understand what I'm um what i'm trying to teach or what i'm trying to explain because i can't see anybody talking so if you have any question just let me know just use this a little this should be fine let's add auto layout to it Let's align its center. Let's increase side paddings. Let's increase top and bottom padding. Let's add something like probably a color. This is fine. Let's add, let's change the background color. What can we use? This is this. Let's change other radius. This is still looking a little bit old. Yeah. This is good. So let's pick our icons. Let's look for a close icon here. This is our close icon. Let's drag and drop here. And let's add it to our design. That's the best part. This is an alert on the notification radar. Now, let's go to an alert warning. Let's look for a warning icon. Do we have any warning icon here? Okay. We have this three. These two icons here. Let's drag and drop. Let's see if we can find. Okay. In general, can you attend to this request? Okay. It's going to be distracting. Okay. So we have another one here. Just follow the process, that's the main thing. Now we have three or four different types of um, alerts. We have our warning, we have our success, and we have our error.
No, that's true. We forgot to create a color for warning. So we just um, manufacture that on the fly. So, but always remember to create something for your warning. Okay. You can see how hard it is to look for a color. If I had um if I had created the color style, it would have been much more easier to like get a color. Sorry. And we can add this to it. Now this is our warning. Now success is always green. Let's go. Hmm. It's looking too black. Yeah, this this should be fine. This is gray fifty. Then we have our error states. Okay, we can leave this as white. We can we can add a little shade of gray? Oh no, let's be that right. So it's black. Okay, I think black is looking much better. Now you can edit this based on personal preference, anyone you want. Let's just drop this here. Now, so with this. We have come to the end of introduction to style guides. Any question? I don't I don't want us to use too much time. Any question? Agbaje, any question? Joshua Kende, any question? Um, I have a question. Okay, I'm listening. Um, this style guide. So after yeah. creating it, what's it going like? How are we going to use it? Okay, good question. Thank God you brought it up. I was planning on um showing you how to use it. So let's just create something. Let's just create. I can onboarding. Let's create an onboarding page. Which frame is this? This is the same name. Okay. Now let's take this outside our style guide. Let's take it up here. I don't want us to look at anything here. Okay, now look at um, this. Now I want to create an onboarding. What is an onboarding? An onboarding page is like the first page you see when you merely open like a mobile app. Now, the typical structure of an onboarding is, um, let's say, okay, let's start from the grid. So you open up your grid. The layout grid here. Remember, we created a layout grid for our mobile view. Layout grid. Oh, okay. We didn't add it. Sorry about that. Didn't style it. Oh, 
minutos. Now let's add our layout script desktop. That makes work easy for you. You don't have to create um, your grid from the beginning. Now, this is an iPhone. An iPhone has like a status bar up here. So let's just give it here. You can see that your grid is um, making work easy for you. I'll just give this this color. Now, how does um, an onboarding page looks like? An onboarding page basically have um, a, an illustration here. So let's just look for an illustration. Uh, let's see our plugin. Let me see if I can get an illustration. Okay, illustration kit. Which should I use? You can use this. Did it drop? Oh, it doesn't. Let me just use another illustration kit. Okay. Let me just use this. Now let's just. All um, onboarding screens have a title. They all have titles. I just take this one up a bit. So now they have all titles. This is I didn't check name for this spot. Let's see. Let's just say um, indication. Now remember the textiles you created. You can easily pick them up from here. Is this okay? Okay, this is looking too big. Let's use this. Let's see our color. Which color should we use? This is our primary color. Let's use our alignment. Pink location. Okay, let me change this to black. Then the next one. Let's just say uh, you can now you can change this easily to body. Now let's resize this. Let's give it center alignment. Let's add it here. To snap to the grid. This also snaps to the grid. So now you can see that our alignments are in multiples of it because of the grid. Now we can easily pick our color again from here. No. Now the next one, 
for an onboarding screen, what do you also have again? Let's take this down a little. Okay, let's start from the middle of the screen. Sorry. Now we can add like a progress bar here. All those dots that you see, you see on on body and screens. Let's just see. Six, no, 16 is too big. Let's see it. Now this is how a typical design process goes. This is how design processes or how people design basically. So, Can see how um, I can easily change colors, can easily change scenes without stress. So this is here. And just align this to align this to the center of your screen. You can see it snaps to the grid. Now we can highlight this. Okay, first page, laws of UX. You can tell them that okay, we are on the first location. That one is gone like that. Now, how do you add your buttons and all the other things? Now you can add your buttons here. You have your icons here, you have your input field here. So you can just pick the primary button, drag, drop, next one, drag, drop. A primary CTA and say login. Oh, okay, let's just register. That's the primary thing you want them to do. Then tertiary button is login. Now you can reshape this. You can also reshape this. Let this snap to the grid. It is also snapped to the grid. Now with this, this is a simple, um, what's it called? This is a simple aborting screen. Now let's put off the grid. You can see this is the screen of a mobile app that we just created easily without stress. Now you didn't have to design your buttons from the beginning. You didn't have to, um, pick this, uh, what's it called, font size and color by just assuming numbers and all. You didn't have to do um, change this color and the font size out of the blues. This one also the colors. I hope you understand now. So now if you have like 30 screens that you need to um, design, you don't need to start doing this button 30 times. You don't need to, um, design this login button 30 times. You don't need to add color to this 30 times. And also, also, if we change our primary color, this will also change. Do you understand? Okay, let me, let me show you that. Now let's replicate this. Just watch. Now this is blue, this is blue. Let's go to our style guide. Let's say we want to change the color of this. So let's say, okay, this. Now, generate style. You can see that that's automatically changed here. And I didn't touch this design. I only changed the color from the style guide and it automatically changed here. Do you understand? So this is um, basically the importance and the advantages of having a good style guide. That's why I said, we are make research on how to make a good style guide. So these are the benefits of having a good and standard style guide. So any other question?
Um, Agbaje, do you have do you have any question? Joshua, any question? No. Okay, so you understand everything that I did. Uh, Joshua. Actually, I'm trying to follow. Maybe when I'm on my own, I will, when I'm doing it, I will try to get it. Okay. Agbaje, do you have a, do you have any question? Okay, Kendi, was I able to answer your question well? Okay, yes, we were able to answer my question. Uh, but uh, maybe because I was not in the first class, because um, like that um, grid that you made, I okay. don't know how you went about it. Before. But there's a recording of the class, right? Yes, 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 there's a recording. Okay. I'll, I'll just watch it. But although now I get like the picture of what you are trying to do. Okay. All right, no problem. You can watch the recording. In general, we'll put up the recording so that um, you can watch it. General, over to you. I'm done with the class. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, meet everyone. Okay, that's fine. So thank you very much, Caleb. Um, so are you not giving them tax? Are you not giving them any tax? Caleb, are you giving them no tax? I was muted. Yeah, I will. I will. Let me just drop the task now. Now, Abin. Is there any group chat or you want to drop it here? Can I just drop it here? I can just tell them with mouth. Okay. My mouth. Okay. So um, your next task, task will be designing an onboarding screen, at least three onboarding screens. Just go and um, look or make research on an onboarding screen using your style guides and also hero section. Check the National the Nigerian Railway Commission I think I dropped the link on the last task. Go to that link and look at how their hero section is. Make your research on what a hero section is. Now redesign your hero section. You know, um, from the last task for laws of UX, we brought out the different laws of UX that they disobeyed and the ones that they followed. Now from those laws of UX that they disobeyed, you redesign their hero page to um, satisfy all those um, parameters that you listed out. Then three onboarding screens, or at least three onboarding screens for any products of your choice. Yeah, general, that's all. I hope you got right. that. Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm glad you, Joshua, can you, I hope you got the task. <clears throat> Uh, yes. I was thinking, I was thinking you type it because I don't think they, they would get it. Okay, I'll just type it and send. Yeah, you, you, uh, just type it and send to the group chat. You just send okay. to Google, I didn't approve that. Okay. Just, I just type and send to the group chat. Anybody that do it, that's fine. Okay, okay. And hey, no problem. Okay, yeah. So, um, uh, what else is there? Okay, yeah. So, we'll be having a weekly challenge. I think Esther okay, will talk about it. The really challenge is that we'll be creating, um, 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 we, we'll be doing a, like period weekly design. I'll be uploading it on our on our LinkedIn uh, page or Andrew. So that's what we'll be doing. So I'll replicate the video. Uh, you design it like it could be a home screen uh, or it could be an error page or any kind of page and all of that. So you just replicate it, put it on, on your LinkedIn page as your day one challenge, day two challenge, and all of that. So we'll start the challenge. And Esther will communicate though. So Esther will be the one in charge of the project. And it will be working with you guys to making sure that you guys are responsive regarding the project. So it will be like, it's, it's a weekly challenge. So she's going to tell you the day they are going to upload on your LinkedIn page. And I'm following most of your LinkedIn handles. So I'll be monitoring if you're uploading on your LinkedIn pages and all of that. So I, I think that is okay, right? 
Yeah, just um, a suggestion. Okay. So instead of instead of having or instead of recording the YouTube video, why not just give them like a picture, then give them all the resources they need for the design. Sure, you okay. get. You can. You can, you can um, design it on your Figma, then exports as um a png file or a jpg file then if you use an illustration it should be inside the assets folder you can put it inside or probably a google drive link then send them the google drive link then send them also the picture of the design they have to replicate i think that would that would be much better yeah correct nice, nice, okay. yeah, nice one. so that, is there anything again is there anything you want to, want to do for this Think um, that's all. I don't have any other thing from my end. I want to thank you on say Joshua Kende. Um, you said I should remind you to send me the social media at this system. social media social, manager. Oh, yeah. Uh I, I was expect, I was expecting Esther to be around, but she's not around. So don't worry, don't worry about that. I'll just chat her up. Do you get? Kendi, yeah, you're still muted. Yes, yes, I get you, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem. Let's call it again now. I hope you guys are doing good. Please stay safe. Caleb, thank you. Agbaje, nice one. Polishola, Kendi. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. All right. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, everyone.